similar to a house that is built on a foundation that has irreconcilable structural issues. These reforms are sort of attempts to try to paint a room in a house that is fundamentally falling down. When we look at the case of Minneapolis, they implemented implicit bias training. They had community policing, procedural justice training. They did de-escalation training. They had mindfulness. They did reconciliation efforts with the local community and communities of color. They did all of these things. They implemented body cameras and George Floyd was still murdered. Those reforms, those interventions do not stop Black people disproportionately from dying. The focus is now around defunding and people are hearing defunding and they're not seeing that it's a part of a broader strategy around diverting funds away from policing and reinvesting those into community resources. The safest communities don't have the most police, they have the most resources. And from decades of research, we know that creating communities that have the resources that they need to thrive, to have food, to have housing, to have employment and education. Those things drive down conflict violence. Increased levels of policing actually causes violence. You know, some examples of that is if someone is having a mental health crisis, police respond to these situations and escalate them, you know, and especially if you have experiences with police violence, you know, what would it look like again if crisis intervention response teams were able to respond, if conflict resolution teams were able to respond to situations that didn't involve violence or harm. The only options really now are police. In the case of George Floyd, someone allegedly using a counterfeit $20 bill, and there was no reason why police had to respond to that. But the current model is someone committed a crime, called the police, the police come, and they often, as we see, engage in violence or arrest or murder, and it doesn't have to be that way. In many municipalities, the percent that the police take up of the budget is exorbitant. Any given municipality, it might be between 30 to 40 to 50 percent of the entire city budget. You know, what's to show for it? Really, what this all resides on is this very powerful narrative that police are the stewards of public safety. And so, if you were to say, you know, we think that we could, we should divert this money to schools and housing instead of police, it was almost seen, seen as a form of blasphemy because then it got interpreted as, well, that means you don't want safe communities. But there are other ways and other alternatives that we can approach a model of safety and that does not rely on, you know, centuries old models of, you know, really racial and class order maintenance. We know policing quite literally began as slave patrols. And then throughout the country, it was a way of busting unions, controlling and, and surveilling immigrants, and you know, black people and other marginalized communities of color in recent decades, every single social issue that you can take, basically, you know, government has said, let's try to police and arrest our way out of it. And that has not gotten us any closer to safety. In many ways, it's pushed us much further away from safety. You cannot truly address a foundation of a house that is structurally unsound and has irreconcilable issues by painting rooms. Right now, what's happening is that people are saying, well, if there's no police, what will happen to me? And this is why I think the focus again is on creating alternatives as much as it is about divesting and defunding from what currently exists. You know, we live in a very innovative country. And so, you know, a part of it is to say, well, what does it look like to begin to research? What are the programs out there? Looking what resources exist, what, what alternatives exist? How do we find and, and develop those? And then also, what might we have to create to really be able to conceive of a blueprint that can keep everyone safe? Because this model, at, at you know, as it exists, is not doing that. And, and not only is it not just keeping people safe, it's actually causing violence and harm and premature death routinely.